Hi, I'm Melinda Rose. And I'm Laura Marshall. And this is Light Matters for September 7th, 2011. In this week's Five Minutes to Enlightenment, a specially armored tank really blends in, a bizarre optical phenomenon defies the laws of reflection and refraction, a once promising solar maker files for bankruptcy, and we preview the UK's Photonics Explorer program. UK-based defense company BAE Systems says it has tested an invisibility cloak that allows a vehicle, ship, or building to blend into its surroundings. The adaptive system can work over infrared and other frequencies. It is based on sheets of hexagonal pixels that can change temperature very rapidly. Onboard cameras pick up the background scenery and display that IR image on the vehicle, allowing even a moving tank to match its surroundings. It can also mimic another vehicle or even an animal or display identification tags, reducing the risk of friendly fire. Trials in mid-July show that one side of the tank could be made effectively invisible or appear to be other objects, including a 4x4 vehicle, when viewed in the IR. BAE Systems engineers have combined the pixels with other technologies, which also provide camouflage in other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum to provide all-around stealth, something that will be developed further over the next few years. Exploiting a novel technique called phase discontinuity, Harvard researchers induced light rays to behave in a way that defies the centuries-old laws of reflection and refraction. They said the discovery, which essentially creates the effects of a funhouse mirror on a flat plane, carries optics into new territory and opens the door to exciting developments in photonic technology. The key component is an array of tiny gold antennas etched into a silicon surface. The array is structured on a scale much thinner than the wavelength of the light hitting it. Unlike in a conventional optical system, the engineered boundary between the air and the silicon imparts an abrupt phase shift, dubbed phase discontinuity, to the crest of the light wave crossing it. Each antenna in the array is a tiny resonator that traps the light, holding its energy for a given amount of time before releasing it. A gradient of different types of nanoscale resonators across the silicon surface can effectively bend the light before it even begins to propagate through the new medium. The resulting phenomenon breaks the old rules, creating beams of light that reflect and refract in arbitrary ways depending on the surface pattern. The frequency, amplitude, and polarization of the light can also be controlled, meaning that the output is, in essence, a designer beam. Almost two years to the day after Vice President Joe Biden announced the finalization of a Department of Energy $535 million loan guarantee for cylindrical solar panel maker Solyndra Inc., the company announced it will file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The California-based company has laid off 1,100 employees. Despite strong growth in the first half of 2011 and a number of orders for very large commercial rooftops in North America, Solyndra said it could not achieve full-scale operations rapidly enough to compete with larger foreign manufacturers. Exacerbating the situation is a global glut of solar panels and a severe price slide that was caused, in part, by uncertainty in government incentive programs in Europe and the decline in credit markets that finance solar systems. Solyndra's unique cylindrical solar panel technology was recognized with a 2008 PRISM Award for Photonics Innovation by Photonics Media and SPIE. Solyndra said it will now evaluate its options, including selling the business and licensing its technology. Photonics Explorer, an educational kit on optics and photonics for grades K through 12, launched this month and is now in use by children all over Europe. Melinda spoke with project manager Robert Fisher at SPIE Optics and Photonics about the program. In many schools, what students learn is um, what is 100, 200 years old, um, what a lens is, uh, what a telescope is. They don't know about lasers, they don't know about what's going on in, uh, in that field today. The teachers don't know. So what we do is we provide teachers with the material that they can teach photonics, up-to-date, modern, fun. We give the teachers the materials, the worksheets, the background information, everything he needs to teach this subject as it is really today relevant to the student. And we design these materials that they directly fit into the curricula of the different countries. We are uh, estimate there are going to be about 3,000 students working with this material, giving us their feedback before we then go into serial production and produce 3,000 kits in the next year. The kit is handed out free of charge to teachers in conjunction with a training course on inquiry-based teaching. So, Melinda, will the program be coming to the U.S.? Yes, in fact, they're working with SPIE and other partners and hope to be able to bring the program to North America. Well, it's so good to hear about photonics being taught in the schools. I think it's really important. Yes, yeah, speaking of photonics, <laughs> the September issue of Photonic Spectra is in the mail now. Look for it to arrive in your home or workplace in the next few days, if it hasn't already, with the cover story about metamaterials. 
You still have a chance to win an iPad, too. Simply share the link to this video or any episode of Light Matters with a friend or colleague by September 30th, and make sure you copy lightmatters.photonics.com on the email you send, and you'll be entered into a drawing to win an iPad, too. We have a link to do that for you just below the Light Matters player on the photonics.com homepage. We'd also like to hear from you. Please send your questions or comments to lightmatters.photonics.com. You can also follow Photonics Media on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching, because it's only five minutes to enlightenment. From the experience that I've learned already is that light is sound, I mean light is faster. I mean when you're dealing with fiber optics, it's, it's building up everything that we're trying to, uh, that, that's our newest technology, all of our solar panels, all the Think Green technology, I mean it's, you know, coaxial cable is obsolete, you know, I mean I look at it as that is the wave of the future and light is sight and if you can see, you can you pretty much function, you know. Um, I think the sight is one of the main things that we need and that light brings that and then the spectrum that the lights that are having in some of these beautiful exhibits that they have out here. I mean, I'm just, I'm so intrigued about what I'm gonna learn today and what my future holds as far as fiber optics lighting is concerned. Well, for me it's fascinating because it's, uh, it's not only uh, technological, it's, it's also, had a lot to do with our senses. It's uh, maybe it's 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 a kind of em emotional. So you, um, yeah, that's uh, that that is uh, that's and well, what what matters is that light is is, a f is fundamental for every information process for for every. Maybe if you want to get uh, in a philosophical way, it's, it's important for every exchange of information between human beings. <laughs>